When Srila Prabhupada started Krishna Consciousness Movement in the Western countries, it was very new. In the 1960s, there was a, a situation in American society called a counterculture movement. The American culture was work hard, go to a good school, go to a good university, get a good degree, work in a good company, have a good family, typically like every modern society would recommend and then have a good life but then the young people in America started seeing their own father and mother having good jobs having a good house having a good car but fighting so the younger generation had become disillusioned they have no home right unlike in our country where we all go we have a home and our father and mother are there in the home so it was not like that it was a broken family and the whole of America was like that. The young people in the universities, they had the spirit of exploring and considering very revolutionary ideas. A large number of them would decide to drop out of universities and look for alternate lifestyles. There were many pop singers who composed songs about all these kind of things happening. And these songs became popular all over America. But at that time, a new chemical was discovered called LSD. At that time, it was a chemical, it was not a drug, it was not banned. And people would take this LSD in the form of some pill or something, and they would get some kind of a very nice experience. <laughs> Later on, it was figured out that it is a drug, it's addictive, and it was banned. So LSD was discovered by a scientist in an American university and he himself started taking that and he was also advocating that. They were all very ignorant. At that time, some information about Buddhism and such things came about from eastern part of the world. They were not guided properly. It was in this kind of a society, Srila Prabhupada went and he started having kingdoms. He would chant the Hare Krishna over and over. And these young, young boys and girls, many of them had musical uh, instincts and they would bring their own instruments and Prabhupada encouraged. And this kirtan would go on for one hour, one and a half hour. And Prabhupada very deeply meditated. Once in a day he would look up, open his eyes and look around and again close. There were many young people who became devotees. They would recall. When Srila Prabhupada opened his eyes, they were, his eyes were bad. Once again, he was Krishna. Very deeply meditated, prayerfully, Prabhupada was chanting. Because he was bringing a very important message of Krishna consciousness. Then Prabhupada would bring the Kirtan to a close. Then all of them, ah, what an experience it was. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a very mystical experience. A few minutes he would speak. Because they are not in a position to absorb a very heavy philosophy. So like this, it would go on. Then, one day, Srila Prabhupada announced to, the, to those young people who were coming regularly. Now let us go to the park and chant in public. Oh, they said, no, no, something new for us. And, uh, you know, what will others think about us? Okay, we are coming to your room inside and we are sitting and playing and chanting. That's okay. But then, uh, oh no, no, Swamiji. They used to call him Swamiji at that So I said, no, let's not matter. Yeah, let's. So one day was fixed and they all started. And then uh, Prabhupada was walking, very confident. Prabhupada was his head up. And uh, many others, some of them were falling, running behind him, carrying drums, like a caravan walking through the streets and went to the park and they settled down in the afternoon and started chanting. So this is how Krishna Consciousness Movement started off.